Hi everyone, this video is a brief lesson on how you can use the buttons on your calculator. Knowing how to efficiently use your calculator is so important for first year physics. Not only do you not want to make silly calculator mistakes, but you also want to get really fast at doing your calculations. So hopefully this video helps you. In this demo, I'm using my Casio calculator. So don't be alarmed if the buttons on your calculator are in different places or look a little different. Let's start with numbers that are represented using scientific notation. For example, 4.89 times 10 to the 6. How would you plug this into your calculator? Well, you start by typing out your number, 4.89. Then you hit the exponent button, followed by the exponent. Let's do another example. Here we have 2.4 times 10 to the negative 2. Here we have 8 times 10 to the 5. So that's how you represent scientific notation in your calculator. Now let's look at exponents, starting with the power of 2. If you have a number that's raised to the power of 2, you can plug that into your calculator by typing the number and then hitting the squared button. For example, we can plug in 5 to the power of 2, and we get 25. Now what about the power of 3? If you have a value raised to the power of 3, type in your number, then hit Shift, followed by the squared button. Now you have the power of 3. So now we understand the power of 2 and 3, but what about other exponents? Well, all you need to do is type in your number, so 4, then use the caret symbol, and then type your exponent. And you can use this to type in any exponents. For instance, 7 to the power of negative 5. In this example, we had 4.5 raised to the power of 2 over 3. And you can see how I use brackets to make sure that the exponent gets calculated together. And now one last exponent shortcut. If you ever have a value raised to the power of negative one, you can use this button here. Now let's do some work with the square root. If we wanna find the square root of four, all we have to do is click the square root button, then type in our value. And you can use the square root button for any positive value. So for example, the square root of 89. You can also use brackets within the square root. For example, what is the square root of five divided by 12? So that's the squared root. What about the cubed root? For example, what's the cubed root of 64? Well, all you need to do is click shift, then click the square root button, followed by typing in your number. Now we have the cubed root of 64. Now what if you wanted to take the fourth root, the fifth root, the sixth root, really the root of any number? Well, all you have to do is type the value outside of the root, then click shift, followed by the caret button, and now type the value inside of the root. So here we have the sixth root of 64, which is equal to two. Here's another example for you. What's the eighth root of 547? Now let's learn how to switch between degree mode and radian mode on the calculator. You can tell you're in degree mode because of the little D on the screen. On this calculator, you just have to click mode four times, and then you reach this screen, which shows you degrees and radians. If you click one, you'll be in degree mode. If you click two, you'll be in radian mode. And you can tell you're in radian mode when there's a little R on the screen. Make sure you know what mode you're in if you're dealing with the trigonometric functions, like sine, cos, or tan, because you'll get a different value if you use degree mode versus radian mode. And with that, let's jump into our trigonometric function. So you can see we have sine, cos, and tan. If I wanna plug sine 30 degrees into my calculator, I'll make sure I'm in degree mode, and then I'll click the sine button and type 30. Just to highlight the difference, look what happens when I type sine 30 and I'm in radian mode. 
Now let's try cos 30 degrees. What about tan 30 degrees? You may also have to use the inverse of sine, cos, and tan. To access these buttons, all you have to do is click shift and then click sine inverse, cos inverse, or tan inverse. For example, sine inverse of 0.8 is 53.1 degrees. Here's another little example. What's tan inverse of 1.56? Now let's look at how we can type pi into our calculator. All we need to do is click shift and then press the exponent button. Here's a question for you. How would you do pi squared? What about the square root of pi? One last example. How would you find the tan inverse of pi? Now let's do some more complicated examples where you have to use brackets. For example, what if you had to plug this into your calculator? We have 2 times 9.8 plus 1 squared. Here's another one for you. What do you get when you do 4 divided by 7 times 8 plus 1 cubed? Here's what I got. Let's just do two more challenge questions. Try plugging this into your calculator. We've got 2.5 times the square root of 8 plus 1 divided by 4 times 3.1 times 10 to the negative 5 raised to the power of 2. And finally, give this one a shot. We've got 4 times 5.2 times 10 to the negative 2 plus the square root of 3 raised to the power of 2 divided by sine 45 plus pi cubed. I hope this video helped you get a better understanding of how to use your calculator, and I challenge you to keep playing around with the buttons to find even more functions hidden within your calculator.